Adam Bugden is a firefighter who's helping out. And while he's been fighting fires for nine years, he says this is the first time he's experienced genuine fear as a firefighter. He joins us now on the phone from Fort McMurray. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We're hearing, you know, just from the premier uh, just a few moments ago, this fire could double in size uh, by the end of today, uh, even getting to the neighboring Saskatchewan border, and that it's in no way under control. What is it like for you being right on the front line? Well, it's uh, it, it's surreal. Uh, it's we're starting to get a hold on things now a little bit and uh, the wall of fire isn't surrounding our city now. So we're starting to get a little bit of uh, normalcy back so we can start getting shifts and get a little bit of rest and, and we're starting to get regular food and, and things are starting to get back to normal a bit. So that's good so we can be a little more efficient and, you know, but at the same time, it's allowing it to sink in a little bit more than it was before. So it, it, it's challenging. When you say sink in, what's going through your mind? Well, there, there, there's a million and one things going through all of our minds. And, and you know, we, we, we close our eyes and we see fire. You know, it's I've never seen anything like this in my life and I never want to see it again. And we're all in the same boat here. Uh, there's a million and one things going through my mind, but the most important thing is is maintaining a safe perimeter around our home, because this is our home, and and being able to see my family again. Were you able to say goodbye to your family as they had to move on out while you remained to fight the fire? Yeah, I mean, my wife called me and said uh, they think they're going to evacuate people. Should we evacuate? And at first, I, do, I wasn't aware of the situation. Uh, it was my first day shift. Uh, I was captain on Pumper 1. And uh, we, I didn't know any better at the time before I was debriefed, and they told me uh, that it was time to evacuate. But before then, I said, you know, don't, don't panic, honey. I don't think you need to evacuate yet. And within two minutes of getting my debrief, I called her and said, yeah, pack your bags. You got to go. And that was the last I talked to her for about 24 hours. Wow. Uh, how are the other firefighters feeling? What kind of conversations are you having? We're, well, I mean, the camaraderie that we have is, I, I, I truly believe is, I, I mean, I don't have any other jobs, but it's unmatched anywhere, I think, in, in the world, because I have, I have so many brothers and sisters up here, it's incredible. So we have, we have really good conversations, you know, we we're open. We talk about our feelings a bit, you know, like how it makes us feel. And, and, you know, we have some dark humor, you know, we're trying to keep each other laughing and, and, and keep our spirits up because it's not time to grieve or, or, or to be sad yet because we still got a really big job to do. But it must be, uh, we can only imagine exhausting both physically and emotionally for all of you. Yeah, we're all running on, uh, we all have busted up feet and hands and, and I mean, we're going 24 hours and 36 hours with no sleep. And that was at the start of it. I mean, I think I had a total of eight hours sleep in three days uh, and I'm not the worst off. Everybody's going through the same thing here. And we've had people, uh, one guy I work with went 40 hours straight without sleeping. And it's not sitting at a desk, not sleeping. I mean, we're hauling hose, we're going up and down hills, we're, we're fighting 40 foot flames. We're finding, you know, it's one structure after another is going up and we're, we were losing for a long time. It sounds surreal, the work that you were doing. And there are many Albertans, many Canadians calling the firefighters on the ground like you heroes. How do you feel about that? Sorry. I, I, I don't consider myself a hero, but I've met more heroes in this experience than I've ever thought existed. Sorry. It's okay, Adam. It's okay. Our community has more firefighters and more emergency responders, police, everybody that have given up their own homes that are safe 
their own families that are waiting for them to come up in the middle of this beast to help protect my home. They're heroes to me. And everybody that I work with has been holding me up and I've been holding them up. So I'm in a company of heroes. But we're just doing what we want to, we want by keeping our home safe. We don't have a choice. It's not like we can just leave and watch our home burn. We can't do that. We just can't, it's not in us. It's not in us. We're gonna do whatever we can. You know, I'm sure your family <laughs> is proud. Do you know when you'll be reunited with your two kids and your wife? We, we've been hearing things that they're trying to plan, uh, you know, days off, like two days at a time where they can shuttle us out of here and so we can see our families and things like that before we got to come back. Uh, I've been hearing things like that, nothing definitive as of yet. But uh, again, that's that's the upper management level. That's all those guys trying to figure out how to take care of us. Uh, right now, we're, we're I mean, we're still just trying to do everything on the ground. Adam, personally, I want to say thank you, and I know there are so many others who uh, have the same sentiments. We appreciate it. Thank you. Adam Bugden, a firefighter in Fort McMurray, right on the front line.